Hello and welcome back to the rendering and compositing part. The first thing we're going to do before we render anything is we will set up the ground. We can basically just copy paste those three nodes from the ground particles and apply it to the ground so the ground is moving a little bit. And we can append a subdivide node, where is it, this one, to make it even smoother. And then we can copy it as well and paste it in its respective rendering node. I will render this using a 3D Elite. 3D Elite, for those of you that don't know, it's a pretty fast CPU-based render engine. I use it basically all the time. It's pretty easy to set up. It's very, very fast. It has insanely fast volume rendering as well. I think it's pretty good to use, especially for a lot of visual effects stuff. I'm going to use the free version of 3D Elite, which is completely free, even commercially usable and stuff like that. But you can just render with six of your cores. Let's hop over to the 3D Elite shelf and click this ROP plus icon. This will set you up with a camera and with a rub. In my layout, here is the out context. So here's the 3D light rub. You can see there aren't too many options, so it's pretty straightforward. But let's create our materials first. So we create a 3D light material builder, name it particles, and rub. For the particles, we will be using a constant shader. The constant shader is pretty lightweight because it's not really affected by lighting as far as I understand it and just returns color opacity and has the ability to emit the scene. So it's really perfect for a use case like this. So let's hook it up. We will use attribute read node to fetch the attributes from our particles like CD and alpha. CD goes into color, alpha goes into opacity. And I will also use color to float to get the luminance from the color. And I will drive the intensity with this one. That's pretty much all we need to do. Now we can copy the material. Don't forget to turn on velocity blur for the particles. And for the ground, we will actually create quite a similar setup. We'll also use the constant shader for this. And for the ground, we will just use the color to drive the opacity. We will turn off cast shadows and we will go for the slight blue, something like this. Finally, we will append a float blend node to multiply the whole opacity down in shader. So this will be the foreground, background will be zero, and the factor will basically determine how much of the color luminance will be used for the opacity. Now let's hop into our 3D light drop. The only thing I'd like to change is I will raise the pixel samples. The pixel samples will take care of things like motion blur, depth of field, anti-aliasing, pretty small high frequency structures, and we certainly have a lot of those. So let's raise it up to 32 to begin with. The shading samples will basically take care of all the rest of the light sampling, shading sampling, surface sampling, etc. You can go to scene elements and override display flags. We don't have any lights, so we can leave the asterisks we'd like. But for the object's render, I would like to change it to ren underscore asterisk so that only geometry containers with this ren underscore prefix will be rendered. Now we are ready to go and fire up the IPR. And there you go, lots of particles. The first thing I'd like to change is ground is way too opaque. So I will reduce the opacity using this float blend to a very, very small amount. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe to open to also we are rendering in 720p. I would like to set my IPR to full HD. Yeah, that's better. Then I would like to activate depth of field. Not much of a difference. We have to lower the f-stop 0.4, something very small. Nice. That looks good. And you can see it's rendering pretty fast. I mean, it's full HD, a million particles, depth of field. You can restart IPR because it's still saying 720p, but that's not true. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's still beta. Who cares? Yeah, now it's correct. 
cool. Yeah, and I mean, now it really comes down to playing with different settings. Maybe uh, we can give it more samples so the depth of field will be a little bit cleaner. Okay. And if I recall for my final animation, I used around 100 pixel samples. That's still pretty fast, considering it's only using six of my cores. Okay, back in IPR mode, I would like to tweak um, the trail particles of the vertical particle system a little bit. I would like to scale the velocity just to give them more of a straight line appearance. Maybe five. Yeah, that's better. If you want to speed up your IPR session, you can go to your 3D light wrap, go to overrides and enable interactive preview with speed boost. Maybe leave the sampling at 100%, but override the resolution. Yeah, and now it's using half of 1080p and you have a very interactive render session. For the final image, I would like to push the uh, focus distance back a little bit. Maybe seven increase the f-stop. If you want to render it out, you really have two options. You can go to the 3D light drop, go to output, switch the display toggle to image file, specify a path and your settings, whether you want OpenXR, deep, whatsoever. Or you can switch the toggle to NSI file and you can write down NSI archives, which are like IFDs for Mantra. They pretty much hold all the information needed for the scene to be rendered headless. So you don't have to keep this Houdini session open while you're rendering and you can kick off the NSIs from a terminal and render them. It's more efficient. Now I will try to give you a brief overview of my compositing process. First of all, I would like to mention I'm by no means a professional compositor. I just use the things or so-called techniques that work for me. I got my image here from 3 d Light. First of all, I would like to change my project settings. Okay, we're working in Full HD and I'm using ACES. The Rec 79 space. The first thing that I did was to noise the render just a little bit. After I denoised it a little bit, I created a constant for the background. Used the grade node to, and I restricted the grade node with the roto shape. Create a roto and add a blur. No, 200 pixels maybe even more 400 and merge it underneath the render. It's a little bit too, uh, too much, but something like this. So what I also did is I used regrain to match the grain of the background. Then I used a note I found on Nukepedia. It's a very cool website for all sorts of gizmos and plugins for Nuke and it's called the Fibonacci Glow, which lets you create really nice exponential glow. It's a little bit too much. We use the size, crop to format, and just limit it to those very bright, big spots. Something like this, maybe. Don't want to overdo it. What I also did is use the key to isolate the brighter areas. I used the grade node to blow those areas out even more, just a tiny bit. And I would also add another grade note, use the same mask, go a little bit more towards blue in the highlights, play around with the colors a little bit. Also used volume rays, just laying them on top of the bright parts, changing the quality to high, increasing the ray length and increasing the pre-ray blur. And I merged them back on top plus and decreasing the effect just a little bit of glow. To get even more details out of this image, I used the new upscale mode, which is doing some AI horrid upscaling, I believe. I don't know if you can see it, but it works really good. Unfortunately, this is the new non-commercial version, so I can't render out anything larger than full HD. So what I did is lock to lin node, change it to lin to lock. We will reform it after this, changing the filter type to sync, which will be a lot sharper and preserves a lot more details than the default one. Also did a tiny bit of sharpening, using the size and using the lock to lin node again. It still appears to be sharper than before. And this for me personally is the best uprising sharpening whatsoever workflow. I don't know if it's technically correct at all, but it works for me quite nicely. And this lock tool in reformat, 
sharpening Octolin again technique I learned from Hugh Getter. He is a very great compositing artist and has a very, very cool YouTube channel. Definitely check him out. Big shout out to him. Moving on, I then did some color correction, I believe, just doing, I don't know, a little bit of grading, a little bit less saturation, a little bit more contrast, maybe. Um, let's see, still a little bit more blue in the highlights. You know, I'm, I'm not a colorist, so it's all basically tried and error until I come up with something that I like. <laughs> no secrets here. I also found this defocus aberrations gizmo on Nukepedia, which does a lot of cool things. For example, you can go into the post processing and allow chromatic aberrations. You can really go crazy with it, but just very subtle coma, <laughs> whatever this is, looks cool. And you can also add a vignette. And what I also did was to add some lens distortion at the end. Just a tiny bit, and I scaled it back up again. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial series. I'm keen for your feedback. And when there is anything I did completely wrong, or there are better ways to do it, or you have an idea of how to improve it, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm very, very much looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to doing more tutorials in the near future. So until next time.